going to ask you a rhetorical question. Is life good or what? Yeah. All right, all right, we're in the right place. Look around the room, see who's swimming in this ocean of devotion with you. Feel the presence of God all around you and the presence of community, community that grants you immunity from the lower frequencies of life, helps you to keep your conversation high, your vision forward, thinking, and allow you to become more and ever less than your true self. Look to, look to someone le left or right and let them represent the entire community, even the live streamers and those in the 180 countries around the globe that are tuning in with us. Look at that person and just say, my, my, my. Oh my God, there is such good in you. There's such loveliness in you. There's such beauty in you. Power is all in you. Intelligence runs through you. You are surrounded and enveloped by divine abundance. And you have come to set it all free. To make a mighty difference on this planet and to help change the world for the better. Let's be about this in the here and now. And so it is. Amen. Touch and agree. That would be a handshake. That would be a high five. That would be a hug. That would be whatever you feel uncomfortable with. You don't want to get comfortable in a comfort zone. That's death and stagnation, you see. So we welcome you to Agape, and if you're here for the first time or for the 28th time or for the 100th time, we welcome you with an open heart that you're able to participate in your own unfolding in a dogma-free community that knows that the presence, which is never an absence, is called by many names, never changes its nature, never compromises itself. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this presence is love. This presence is beauty. It is what it is. And it predates all religions. And so religions emerged when individuals had insight into the presence, but it predates any religious expression on the planet. And so we're into that kind of dynamic, appreciating all religions as a pathway to the encounter with the divine. And so we're here to celebrate that. Dogma free, baby, dogma free. So you can be comfortable wherever you are and wherever you are and not. Our theme for the month has been your call to success. And we've been working with this theme for the last three, three weeks, coming to a great understanding uh, that uh, real success is the activation of our potential, which is unlimited, the unfoldment of our soul of which we must participate in, and the delivery of our gifts. We've come to an understanding that what the world calls success is really preparatory, is preparation to success. The, the accumulation of a financial good, financial literacy, livelihood, ideal employment is not success. It's the preparation for success. The, the attainment of a, a divine healthy body is not success. It's preparation for the success. The ability to have a, a, a wonderful companionship and relationships is not success. It's the preparation for success and on and on and on. Meaning as those structures are, are stabilized, as you're able to be healthy, as you're able to be in relationship, friendships, companionships without your ego blowing it up, <laughs> being right all the time, <laughs> or or, or uh, the, the, the financial literacy to reveal the abundance of the universe as that structure is stabilized. It means as those structures are stabilized, you're leveraging energy that can now be put into delivering of your gift. If in fact those structures are unstable, you're always working on it. You're always trying to, you're always uh, going to the hospital. You're always uh, trying to get more money. You're always, uh, whatever the case may be, but once they get stabilized, once they are working on your behalf, they become an asset and not a liability. Now you can get on what you've said you were going to do before you got here. You begin to remember your pre-birth choice as to what gifts you were going to deliver when you got to the planet, what difference you were going to make. And now that you don't have to worry about those other structures, which is what Jesus meant, when he said that you are to live like the lilies of this field, spinning and toiling and not, and not have one anxious thought about, those, about that stuff because it's working systematically and automatically. Just as in this instant, your heart is beating and you're not sitting there forcing it to beat. Beat! Beat! You're not forcing the oxygen out of the air, 
when you breathe. I need the oxygen. Come on, come on, give it, give it to me. Ah! No. Systematic automatic is a part of your subconscious and subjective awareness of life. It's happening automatically. Lilies of the field consciousness means that you put your entire life under that vibration. So you are, you're just not working on it. You're allowing it to flow through you by the work that you have done on yourself. What does that mean? Something's happening in your financial life. You serve an apprenticeship to that area of your life with a mentor or someone that can help you. Your body temple is out of whack. You find a great healer, a great life coach, a great, a great individual that knows how to deal with your body temple until you get it together. On and on and on and on so that you can be free to be successful. Success is the activation of your potential, unlimited, eliminable potential, and the unfoldment of your soul. This is where you participate in your own unfolding. By being here, by taking classes, by affirmatively praying, by meditating, you are participating in the unfoldment of your soul and the delivery of your gift. Every single being here has, has a level of giftedness. You have come to discover, cultivate, and express your gift. Not necessarily walking lockstep in the societal norms or whatever they may be, just having a job, but there's something about you that is magnificent. There's something about you that is gifted. There's something about you that's creative. There's something about you that you are to leave a vibrational legacy on the planet before you leave as only you can. Because if you don't do you, as I said earlier, you won't be done. You've got to be about this. So oftentimes, your place of employment may be subsidizing you giving your gift. Or your place of employment might be where you're giving your gift. But somewhere along the line, you have to ask your higher self, your oversoul, the Christ within you, the presence of God, what is my gifted nature? What am I here to share? Let it shine. And then not only will you rise and shine, but you'll shine, then you'll rise. You see, you will glow from the get-go. Shine and rise for the spirit of the living God. And then you'll understand devotion in motion. Devotion, steadfastness. Devotion, commitment. Devotion, a sense of steadfastness that takes you to having total loyalty to the presence that's within you so that you're living every single day with a sense of devotion as you're participating in your own unfoldment, which is the motion of a devotion, so that certain things begin to happen. And these things can't just happen. They, they don't just happen. They happen just according to your participation in spiritual practice, high conversation, and the eliminating of the blots that create a filter between you and the presence of God. In other words, as the Sufi teachings would have us, there are seven veils between you and the divine, but there are no veils between the divine and you. That when the presence sees you, it sees pristine nature, perfection, unlimitable good, but you often have filters between you and the presence that are lies and hindrances, false beliefs. As you become so devoted to awakening, you begin to see those filters, discount them, opt out from them, and begin to express life on a higher and higher level. One of the first things you might notice is that you have squatters in your mind from time to time. <laughs> You have, you have squatters there that are, that are living rent-free, draining your mental energy, and having you live at a level that's pulling you down. Some of these squatters are saying that you're not good enough. Some of them, think, some of them are saying that you're not worthy. Some of those squatters are, are pulling your attention in that you don't matter. You're not significant. There are other people that are more significant than you. People well known, they're more important than you. Not so. You want to evict those squatters. <laughs> they're, they're draining your mental energy with a whole soul devotion. You start to notice them whenever you start to take a step into the expansion of your awareness. You'll notice the squatters right there yipping at you and yammering away. And, ah! 
Evict those bad boys. Uh, be begin to say to yourself on a regular basis, not only are you worthy, if the grace of God can't be earned anyway, it can only be received and accepted when you make yourself available with the whole soul devotion to your spiritual practice, regardless of what you're feeling moment by moment by moment. In other words, your moment by moment feeling is oftentimes just lies from the squatters that have become a part of your emotions that you think are so important. They are not. If they're not telling you the truth, they're not important, you see? And so you want to be so devoted to your spiritual practice that when you don't feel like it, you don't even care. I'm going to do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get up and have a moment with the presence. I'm going to study. I'm going to hang out at Agape a little bit. I'm going to take a class. I, I don't care what I'm feeling like. I only know what I'm devoted to. And then you break through the squatter field and begin to see life differently. And then you begin to be aware that you are here in this human incarnation, as I said earlier, uh, 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 to bring forth your giftedness. You didn't come into the human incarnation just to have human experience. That's a waste. No, no. You've come into this human incarnation to bring the eternal into it. If you want human experience, we've got something for you. It's called the movies. <laughs> you pay some money, you jump in, you see the lowest common denominator of the human experience, malice, rivalry, hate, greed, killing, mayhem, stealing, fear, 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 nervousness. You go in, you check in for a couple of hours, you experience it, then you check out. <laughs> Just like you go to a, a, a room at Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm, you get scared for a moment, but then you check it out. Check out. You don't want to go through your whole life having a human experience. You want to go through your life understanding that you are, you have incarnated in human form to reveal the divine presence. So if you need it, just go to the movies. Get Netflix. Get, get Hula. Hula. Just, just have the experience and then check out of it. Wipe yourself off. And then say, okay, I've had that experience tonight. I'm available to more good than I could possibly imagine. I'm here to reflect and to reveal the infinite. I'm keeping my conversation high. I'm going to bring heaven to earth, baby. You begin to do this kind of thing when you are devoted. Then you're moving and you're having a, a constant dialogue with your higher self. And then you learn to be specific about what you want to demonstrate in your life without outlining how it's going to happen. You, give, you begin to know the what, and then the divine intelligence within you and within the cosmos knows the how. You move and you become very specific so you can be specific. I'm available to more prosperity. I'm available to more health. I'm available to great companionship. You become very specific, but you don't have to say, well, it has to be this and that and the other. There's something for you that no one can take away. There is something for you that is you, for you, that will show up. That ideal employment, that home, whatever the case may be. And so I was thinking about the fact that this, this young, young man came home, been married about 10 years, and... And he had forgot the anniversary. And the wife was waiting for her gift, you know. She had gotten his thing. And he had forgotten about it. And she was kind of mad. She was at a high level of piss off today, okay? <laughs> and she stomped her foot and she said, listen, by tomorrow morning, there'll be to be something in my driveway that goes from zero to 260 seconds. <laughs> and I'm not playing. And so the next day she woke up and there was a package in the driveway. So she opened it, it was a scale. <laughs> she wasn't specific enough. We ain't heard from that brother in about five days. <laughs> but she said what she wanted, but she had no specificity. She wanted a car, but she got a scale. So you move through life, be specific. Don't say how it's gonna happen but be very specific about the quality you want to express. 
you want to embody, you want to have in your life. Don't just say, well, whatever, whatever, whatever happens. No, 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 no. Be very specific. I want divine health in my life. I want wealth in my, and I want well-being. I want joy. I want beauty and peace. I want very powerful, good companionship. I want, I, this is what I want to demonstrate. Be specific, but don't say how it's going to happen. Now, devotion in motion brings you to that moment. Now, this devotion is, un, is steadfast, unwavering commitment to your spiritual practice and having an encounter with the divine presence so uh, that uh, the, the squatters are ultimately evicted that you're, you're, you're moving with a sense of specificity without outlining. And there's an, an inner awareness as you begin to be aware that you're here for an incarnation to bring about the divine. And you, you can experience stuff uh, 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 as a voyeur if you desire, but you don't have to have it directly. You just go to the movies. And then something begins to happen. There's a dynamic by which you will be able to walk through the world. And remember, the world is different from the planet. The planet is Mother Earth. The world is what we make up in terms of our opinions and points of view. We experience our own world. We'll be able to walk on the planet through the world and we're aware that whenever we're about to evolve, whenever we're about to have another growth spurt, then the egoic presence sends out distractions to keep you from making that move because the ego doesn't know the difference between enlightenment and annihilation. The unknown is considered annihilation to the egoic structure. So it sends out distractions. And then you develop the strength to be aware of distractions without being distracted by them. Like that noise that's happening right now. There's, there's, there's something going on, and we've, we've set out for the technicians to come uh, uh, fix it. But you can be aware of that distraction, but you don't have to be distracted from what I'm saying or what the choir is singing. You see? You can develop that strength. Or you can say, oh, oh. Oh, the noise is still going on. It's been a half hour now, and nothing's being done about it. And oh, when are they going to fix that? That should just be fixed before we got here. Why isn't it fixed? What's going on? You know, your whole squatter in your mind could just be like sucking your energy. Oh, no, you don't even hear what I'm saying because the squatter is just taking you to the distractions. You develop the strength to be aware of the distractions, but without being distracted by them. That is what happens. When you start to have a level of devotion beyond emotional reasoning, what you're feeling like day to day, so that you're able to walk and notice that whatever you resolve that you're going to cultivate in January, you're still hanging out there in February, in March is getting deeper, in April you're like really coasting, you know, and then momentum takes over inertia and you're flying on the wings of the spirit that are carrying you via your intentionality to be more and never less than your true self. Something wonderful is happening. Say that. Something magnificent is taking place. Say that. Something beautiful is occurring. I want you to feel this right this moment. Something wonderful is happening. Something magnificent is taking place. Something beautiful is unfolding. I want you to feel into that right now because it's making your squatters very uncomfortable. It's like, uh-oh, we're about to be evicted. It's making the squatters very uncomfortable. Oh, 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 hi. Don't say nothing for a while. They spotted us. You begin, as you did earlier with the affirmation, you begin to study so that you are spiritualizing the intellect rather than the other way around, intellectualizing the spirit. You begin to pray. You begin to meditate. You begin to fellowship. And fellowship isn't just coming together with small talk. Fellowship is coming together sharing vision, possibility, testimony, uh, 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 potential. It's sharing at that level so that there's a great and mighty change that begins to take place. Everybody who can, please rise for just a moment.
You want to get your body into this. Just move your body around a little bit. Just now let your heart open and open your hands up. And just catch the feeling tone that someone is about to give you a beautiful gift, and it's a gift that you want. It's not a scale, you know. <laughs> Someone's about to give you a gift you really want, so there's a level of receiving, a re level of acceptance, a level of gratitude and thanksgiving. These are, the, these are the qualities. This is the essence that you're holding, you see. It's not, it's not uh, uh, anxious. It's not anxiety. Oh, I hope I get it. Oh, I hope I get it. No, no. It's like... You've already known that you were going to receive this. So you're in availability mode, acceptance mode, gratitude mode, appreciation mode. And in this consciousness, say, I'm available to more good than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more good than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more peace than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more peace than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more prosperity than I've ever experienced. I'm available to more health than I've ever realized. I confer this upon myself. And I confer this upon everyone that I meet. I confer this upon everyone that I meet. I confer this upon myself and upon everyone that I meet. Somebody scream about it. Yeah. Feel into it. We're available to more good than we've ever imagined. There's so much good trying to happen. Life is for us. There's nothing against us. I confer this upon everyone. Everyone gets to be happy. Everyone gets to be prosperous. Everyone gets to be healthy. Everyone gets to be in the mind of God pure and unadulterated everyone 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 everyone's included feel into that now you want to work on that particular piece there because there's a virus in the mind that says that there's not enough to go around it's a virus it's a lie we live in a sea of infinite good of which energy can never be created or destroyed it just only transmutes itself we live in a sea of abundance, but we have a thought form of lack and scarcity. That thought form of lack and scarcity says to you through your ego sometimes, if good is happening over there, then there's not enough good over here. That's a lie. And so you want to confer the blessing upon everyone so that when you hear good happening anywhere, you revel and celebrate it. So you vibrate at that level so it can flow through you according to your unique pattern. You see? This is a dose of the Holy Most. Spiritual consciousness, awakened awareness, a Christ and cosmic consciousness. Now, you guys are there. I mean, a couple thousand years ago, people had a global-centric, territorial-centric consciousness. They only knew 40 miles around them, you see. And then we got global consciousness. We got airplanes. We got internet and all that. Global. And then Christ consciousness means the highest potential within the human being. And now you're available to cosmic consciousness. You can actually look up at the stars. You can see galaxies, solar systems. And you can actually hold that space and know that all of that undifferentiated wholeness can pour forth through you as your needs met. Divine answers, harmonizing prosperity, wisdom, guidance, and direction, moving in a language in a way that you can understand. All oh, this is where we start. You see? Devotion in motion, baby. Your call to success. The activation of your potential, the unfolding of your soul, and the delivery of your gifted nature. Scream about that. Woo! Oh! Let me see you jump, if you can. Yeah, you came here to get off your keisters a little bit. Let that blood flow. 
You mainly water anyway, so that your water is now being impacted by the word that's being spoken. It's being imprinted, not with fear, doubt, or worry, or dogma, but it's being imprinted with a divine imprint that you are magnificent, beautiful, wonderful, prosperous, and an heir to the throne of the kingdom of queendom of everlasting good. That is, that is, that is the message that your soul is embracing right now. You may take your seat. Woo. God is good, I tell you. But you know what? I think I'm done. I think, I think we don't, we don't, we don't cover it, the whole universal thing. <laughs> I love life, and I love you. I want you to take a, I want you to feel what you felt when you were up celebrating. I want you to, can you, can you catch that? You catch that feeling? Now, 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 this is the deal. For a moment, you, you temporarily abated your worries, doubts, and fears. Just stay here for a moment because prayer does not bring you an answer. Real prayer is the answer. You understand? That when you hit the prayer field, that's the vibration of the answer. And as you sustain that, it's called prayer without ceasing. It doesn't mean you're walking down the street praying all the time. It means that you have an awareness. If you have that prayer without ceasing, then the answer then materializes. It becomes form, you see. So answered prayer is the vibrational frequency that you're holding when you're realizing, oh, my God, there's so much good. Oh, my God, all my needs are met. Oh, my God, I'm divinely healthy already. When you're holding that space, then that vibration then condenses itself. And you might say, oh, I got the answer. No, you had the answer here. It just, it just became visible. You understand? You getting this? Okay, more next week. Listen. <laughs> but what I was saying is take, a, take an inhalation. Release the sound of ah. Ah. Another. Ah. Another. Suspend it. Spin it right at the apex, right there. Right there. Hear that wonderful sound. That sound is now the talisman. It's a reminder that nothing can distract us from our goals and aspirations. So we, we suspend the breath for a second and feel your connection with the presence, the celebration, all needs met. Feel it while the breath is being suspended so that the water in you and the nervous system is acclimating itself around that high thought so that you can go out into the world and be impervious to the downward spiral of, 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 of conversations that are out of alignment with principle. Now release. Ah. Now turn within. And notice a sense of quietude about you. A sense of stillness. A sense of availability. A sense of openness. Now notice a sense of uh, thanksgiving that wants to rise up from your, 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 your heart space. A sense of appreciation. A sense of, oh my God, I'm so glad to be alive. I laughed today. I smiled today. Some of you might be saying, I didn't think I was going to be able to smile today, but, but I did. And it's affecting my body chemistry. So in this consciousness of divine gratitude, sacred thanksgiving and pure appreciation, this opens ourselves that we're able to see a lot more clearer now. We're able to see the beauty of the presence that's sometimes hidden, but after a while becomes very obvious when we have a pure prayer life, a study life, a fellowship life. We start to see the presence everywhere. How did we miss the hand of God? We become so thankful that we have a recognition of the presence and a divine connection. Never neglect, only connection. And in this consciousness of connection and oneness, this connectivity with the presence, I am what thou art and thou art what I am. This connection with the presence, my life 
is the life of the only life that there is, which is the life of God that runs through all creation, never absorbed by its creation, and bigger than its creation. When you feel one with the presence, it's not blasphemous to feel one with the presence. It's a, a limitation when we limit the presence by thinking we're not one with the presence. So being one with the presence that is never an absence, the word that is being spoken is a vibrational frequency. The word, vibrational frequency, that only knows its own fulfillment. It is a seed idea that as it unfolds, it manifests and demonstrates itself. This is such a word. I speak it with the authority of one knowing that all that there is is God and everything that really is is a manifestation of the only thing that is, which is the presence of God. I speak it for each and every one of us knowing that we are heirs to divine freedom and spiritual liberation. We are heirs to divine peace and wholeness and well-being. We are joint heirs to the vibration of harmonizing prosperity and abundance and pure and dynamic health and well-being. This is the word that's being spoken right here and right now for each of us. And as anyone demonstrates it, it lifts everyone into that frequency because we're not stuck with the virus of separation or scarcity. Something wonderful is truly happening. This word is now serving as a law of elimination to any thought that would hinder, delay, obstruct, or deny us from revealing our full nature and our divine destiny. Squatters, be gone. This is a word of elimination serving notice to the thought forms and the hidden beliefs of separation. Be gone. As we become aware of you, your power is lessened. Your influence is lessened. And we become influenced by the presence and the angels of our higher nature. This is the word that's spoken for each and every being here, that we may be free today and soar into realms of such excellence and such joy that our surface minds have scarcely even believed that it was even possible. And so I want you to take another inhalation. Release. Ah. And I want you to feel. It's the feeling that reveals the healing. So you just feel into what has been said and, and encountered today. Marianne, give him a little, little feeling tone. This day I awoke with a passion in my heart, a feeling of longing, a thirst so strong. I want to be better. An opening for God to make me stronger. My prayer today is for courage to be what the Holy Spirit intends for me. I want to be better, an opening for God yes. to make me stronger. Stronger to reveal more peace. I must be patient. To reveal more love, I must be humble to reveal more power. Make me so much stronger to More love. 
be better and opening for God yes. to make me stronger. This is my As God through our brother Rob McDonald, the Spirit of God through our brother Rob McDonald.